Every beginner in astrophotography that decides that this is the hobby for them eventually decides that they need to get a deep sky setup. So in this video, we are going to go over my personal recommendation for a beginner deep sky setup. All right, so we are gonna start off with the mount, which is arguably the most important piece of the puzzle because you need something stable to work with. So you'll want a German equatorial mount, and the reasoning for that is because of the way it works. It uses two different axes to track your target in the sky, and it also prevents rotation of the object in your frame. Alt as mounts actually fail to prevent this. So moving into my recommendation, that is the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount. And my reasoning for that is after using it for a while, it is a great mount. This mount is among the cheaper of the mounts commonly recommended to beginners, coming in at 1,150 US dollars at the time of recording. Now this mount allows plenty of room to start off with small telescopes and upgrade to larger ones, especially with its 24 pound weight capacity for astrophotography. The HEQ5 Pro also strikes a balance between sturdy and heavy and portability. It's still sturdy enough to keep things pinpoint sharp while you're imaging. However, it's still light enough to be portable in case you need to travel with it. And tracking with the SynScan controller is actually pretty good. However, stick around to the end of the video. I'll recommend the auto guiding system I use that can take your images to the next level. Hi, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. All to help you escape the day to day and image the night. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching the video, consider giving this one a like. All right, so we already went over the mount. What telescope are we gonna go with? Now, most people recommend an 80 millimeter refractor. I actually don't. I recommend starting with a 61 millimeter refractor. And the reason being is due to the focal length, it is way more forgiving if the tracking is just a tiny bit off. But don't fret, there are tons of targets for you to work with in every season throughout the year. And if you're worried about guiding, guiding actually isn't really needed at this focal length. You can get away with one minute exposures as you can see with my picture here of the Lagoon Nebula. This was without any guiding whatsoever. This was with this exact same setup at one minute exposures. All right, so my recommendation for the telescope is the William Optics Zenith Star 61. And the biggest reason, even though it's so simple, is for the included Batnov mask, which helps with focusing. And a little tip for you, once you know where focus is for you, note the number on the scope if it has hash marks like this telescope does. That way you have a real good starting point and all you have to do is fine tune. I know with this telescope, around 37 is pretty close to being focused. And then after that, I throw the Batnov on and then just fine tune. So this telescope is a doublet using FPL 53 glass. Now we're not gonna go too into depth about what that means. Just know that this is among the top of glass used for telescopes before they move on to other materials for the lens. And one nifty thing that they recently added that I don't have yet because I bought my scope before they attach this is this new attachment here that makes attaching guiding scopes easier and makes it a little bit more flexible for when you attach it to the mount. One other thing with every refractor, it doesn't matter if it's this one or one by Skywatcher, you need to make sure that you grab the accompanying flattener if it's not already built in. All right, now that we have the telescope, what camera are we going with? My recommendation here is actually, if you already have a DSLR, stick with it for a while. Stick with it and practice and learn. You're already familiar with the camera, start familiarizing yourself with the telescope and the mount beyond that. If you don't already have a, a camera, I recommend getting a DSLR purely just so you can practice with that and learn the camera and other forms of photography as well. Now the camera I use is an unmodded Canon EOS Rebel T7i. And the main reason that I still use it to this day is because of the handy flip out screen here. Now you can use any DSLR if you want. However, if you don't have one yet, check out my review of the Canon EOS Rebel T7i after you're done with this video. And of course, with every setup, you need some accessories. And the first one that you definitely will need is an intervalometer. Now there is one thing that you need to make sure of with your intervalometer is whatever you set your bulb to, make sure you set the interval at least two seconds longer or else the intervalometer won't work. Another accessory you will need is some dovetail bars. Now the HEQ5 Pro does come with dovetails, but they don't always work for every setup. And the ZS61 now comes with dovetail bars with the new accessories and those work for most setups. However, you're gonna need to get one that works for you, whether 
the mount you end up getting has a Vixen style or an Arca Swiss style way to mount the dovetail. But for maximum compatibility, make sure you get a dovetail that has both Vixen and Arca Swiss compatibility. And to go with the dovetail, you're gonna need some extra screws just in case you drop one in the dark. I have a few times, but my recommendation is linked down in the description below. Another thing you're gonna wanna grab is some dew straps. Now you can start with USB ones. The downside to those though is that they're either on or off. They can't be controlled, but eventually you can upgrade to fully controlled dew straps. If you do go with USB straps, I do recommend getting a 20,000 milliamp battery bank. And the reasoning for that is because I've had 10,000 milliamps last about four to five hours, but 20,000 has lasted me all night with no problems. All right, so this is not really an accessory, but it would be extremely helpful if you have a Skywatcher mount. That is just the SynScanInit app. Now this app helps polar align and it helps you set up the SynScan controller and it shows you where Polaris should be when you're looking through the polar scope. All right, I do have one more thing for you, but before we get to that, I do have a question for you. Do you already have a setup yet? If you do, what is it? If you don't have a setup yet, if you're not gonna go with what I'm recommending you, what are you gonna get? All right, so what I've already told you can help you get some amazing images but if you wanna take it a little further, if your budget allows it, I do recommend getting the ASI Air Pro. So you can fully control everything from your phone or a tablet, so that's the camera and the mount and your auto guiding. This is wireless, which allows you to not stay glued to the setup all night. You can actually go back inside and do other things if you image from the backyard. The ASI Air can also power most of the devices, so it'll power the auto guider. It can power your mount and it can also power the camera. However, with a DSLR, I recommend not using it to power the DSLR if you have an adapter. Now, if you do have an AC adapter for your DSLR, I recommend just using that. And the reasoning for that is that there's no smarts yet in the ASI Air to tell what voltage each device that's plugged into it needs. And you do run the chance of burning out your DSLR. I hope they do put that ability in there, but it's not there yet. Now, as you upgrade away from a DSLR, this can control almost all Zewo cameras. However, the downside to this is that if you use the ASI Air, you're pretty much locked into Zewo. Either way, this setup will take you a long way towards getting some amazing images of the observable universe from Earth. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, subscribe, and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.